Hello everybody, uh, my name is Lucy and yeah, I'm a artist um, working at St Christopher's Hospice. So thank you for, for joining for this group today. Um, I hope that, that you can hear me. This is uh, my first foray into live streaming and um, I've done art classes online before and we're going to be doing a few more of these in the hospice uh, via Zoom for our existing patients. But we're also going to be doing every Tuesday afternoon, uh, the Art for All group that normally runs in the Anniversary Centre is going to be running here online instead. So I'm going to be thinking up a few different art projects over the coming weeks that you can do at home. Um, and also art projects that we're hoping to put up in St Christopher's Hospice that you can also be a part of as well. So you might have seen on Facebook that um, the theme of today was an object in your home. And uh, yeah, we're all, <laughs> I'm stating the obvious, we're all spending a lot of time at home. And I think maybe, it might just be me, but um, maybe, yeah, sort of, re-experiencing the four walls that we live in we might be living in houses where we kind of think oh actually there's not as much space here as I thought or we might be pleasantly surprised and think actually no there's a lot of space here and uh, we might be rediscovering our homes in different ways and maybe thinking about what we want out of life as well but I decided to make some artwork based on an object in my house that um that has, holds happy memories for me. And I actually did this with two objects. So um, uh, this is my Tracy Island moment where I show you my two objects. So first of all, reach down here. First of all, I used this bouquet of artificial flowers. And I was sharing this with um, one of the groups that I do in Caritas, um, which is part of St Christopher's Hospice, which is based in Bromley in Orpington. And, um, members of the group there also had a go at this exercise this morning and this bouquet is artificial flowers and I used it as my wedding bouquet and I chose it because I wanted to be able to keep the flowers that I had and also because I could find the flowers that I wanted so there are these um, Crocosmia or Montbretia and they grow in the hedgerows in Ireland where some of my family is from so that reminded me of people who weren't necessarily at my wedding but um, I felt were there in, in some way, shape or form. And uh, yeah, so I have this bouquet of flowers and it's something I wake up to every day and uh, something that's very much a part of my life. And maybe sometimes it almost blends into the background. So I thought actually what I'll do is I'll look at this. I'll look at this in a different way and I'll make some art about it. And it's, it's also something that holds a very happy memory for me. So it was quite pleasant to do as I was working. So this is the work in progress. Um, this is uh, my interpretation of my bouquet. So I just used some coloured felt tips and did some abstract abstract bits here. My husband asked me whether that was a, a film camera, kind of like you'd see in charades. And I was like, no, no, just decided to do some squares. But um, yeah, it's still work in progress. I'm adding some lines in. But I just let the, let the, uh, the, the felt tip move where it wanted to. But I also kind of kept it in quite a small space. So maybe taking a small bit of um, the object that you've chosen, you yourselves at home, and maybe kind of zooming in on that and actually maybe thinking, oh, can I make this into a pattern in a certain way? Can I, and also using mistakes. So if you make a mistake in the drawing, think, oh, do I actually want it to look like this object? Or can this maybe move in a different way? Can I use a different kind of line? So hello to everybody who's joining. I've just been showing um, an object that holds happy memories for me. And this was something that um, has been put up on the St Christopher's Facebook page. So looking around our homes that we're all spending a lot more time in now. And uh, and yeah, thinking of an object that holds happy memory. So for I think somebody who might just have joined, this was my original object, a bouquet of artificial flowers. And uh, yeah, this was this was the result. So um, yeah, move, allowing lines to move in different ways. And I, I didn't sketch this out actually, I just kind of 
use the felt tips and if a mistake was made I just kind of found a way to um, some of the lines are a bit wobbly but I've gone over them with other felt tips and that's the beauty of it you can just change things up as you want and you don't necessarily need to have sort of loads of coloured felt tips you could use different materials so I also chose another object so <laughs> surrounding myself with objects I chose another object to work around and I thought well maybe I don't want to do too much kind of observational drawing today so I chose this object and this for me represented an object in my house that holds really happy memories for me but which I also it also has some sad memories as well I think a lot of the objects we now have in our houses might hold mixed memories because my friend um, who I've known for a long time she has a matching statue that looks exactly like this and I know that it's in her house and that she lives a couple of hundred miles away and part of the pleasure of the memory is being that she has this as well but also the sad bit is knowing that we're quite far away but yeah I thought yeah the the hair gazing up at the moon I'll do something around that and I thought well maybe I don't I don't actually want to do um, an observational drawing so I thought oh I said make art around an object so what I did was quite literally that um, and I traced around the outline, I'm not sure if you can see, of the hair. And so we have what's left over from the hair on a piece of paper. And similarly to working with um, the flowers, sorry, flowers um, I just kind of added more and more, more around it. And it, it, I feel like I've almost uh, turned it into slight, something like a colouring book, but it was quite... I sectioned off the paper, so I've made some curves around <clears throat> slightly matching the way that the hair, the lines of the hair were, and just kind of drew around. And then I just started filling those curves in. And like you can see down here, this is a bit wiggly and wobbly. It's not a perfect curve. And there are some bits that are kind of don't quite match up, but it's just it was just a case of kind of filling it in. But also I think I quite liked that the outline was left kind of very simple. And this is something I'll fill in. It might take me a couple of days to fill it all in and I'll come back to it. And it's something that you can tune into or tune out of. And you can think about other things to do doing so. It's quite a mindful way of drawing. And you can really, you can stop and reflect about how you're really feeling or you can just be absorbed. So if I get a bit closer, some of these are, these are meant to be kind of leaves. So I tried to make it as though my little hair, who's my object, um, was sitting on top of a hillside and gazing at the moon. So this is a very, it's a very abstracted hillside. And then I thought about maybe having the moon up there or maybe he's looking at the sun. And then how would I show the clouds? How would I show the sky? There might be birds going across. And yeah, that's something that's going to um, see me through in the next while. And, uh, and yeah, so a way to use an object in your house that holds happy memories to make something where you can't actually see the object but you can see the impact that it has around and I also decided right well with my little hair I'm not going to stop there I'm going to use other materials as well because some of us don't might not necessarily have loads of different colored pens loads of different colors of paints or we might not have really nice paper to draw on. I mean, this is very, it's a recycled printer paper, so it doesn't need to be um, very fancy. I'll just show, um, so for people who've just joined, I've been showing my interpretations of this object that I have at home that's very special to me and holds happy memories and that um, I've made art around. So I, tra I just traced around the, around the hair I didn't even I didn't even draw it. I decided nope, not going to go there today. I'm just going to make life easy for myself. And I just drew curves around it, and then I started filling in the curves with pattern. So yeah, but I also thought, well, yeah. I mean, I should probably be a bit thrifty and kind of use the materials I have around me. And um, what do we all have a lot of at the moment? And I thought we all have a lot of toilet roll tubes. So I made. This little guy and yeah so this is the hair he's kind of a little bit smaller his friend and I used um, some leftover um, 
house paint. So thing, something that you'd normally use to paint the walls. I used it on the hair. I've decorated one side. I'm going to get around to decorating the other side. And what I did was just put some sellotape, or actually in this case, um, painting, so the, the paint that you use, the tape that you use to kind of tape off the corners when you're painting, and just taped inside here, flattened this. And uh, yeah, and then I used a bit more paint to do the green. So I actually then thought of what could this object be doing? What might, if I were to imagine a story behind this, this object, what would I imagine? And I imagined it was going on a journey, maybe a journey that I couldn't go on at the moment. And maybe it was going to see, so the, for people who haven't, who've joined this, there is a twin of this elsewhere in the country that's owned by my friend. So maybe the hare is going to go and see its friend. So I thought maybe it's going through a cornfield and or a wheat field. Um, and um, it, there might be poppies in the wheat field. So I've done some little, little red poppies that I'm going to put black in the middle of. And the red, I don't have any red paint. Um, so the red is actually made with nail polish. So you can use, this is a toilet roll tube, um, a black felt tip, some house paint and nail polish. So you can use whatever you have to hand. Um, if you have in your house any white paint that you might have been painting the ceiling, like stan bog standard white paint, if you have that and you have any other paints at all, you can mix them in with the white paint and actually start to create loads of different colours by mixing them in with the white paint and mixing them in with each other. So you'll have, and you can use house paints to paint on paper. You can paint on newspaper to make collages, like you could make, depending if you had maybe a photograph or a photo frame that was your particular object with a happy memory, you might remake a part of that frame, maybe zoom in on a bit of it and then use collage, use newspaper to recreate different bits of it. You can cut around if you have glue, stick it on. Um, sometimes you can use, you can also make glue, I think, I need to check this, um, maybe using kind of a, a flower paste, though I realise flour may be difficult to come by. Um, so different ways of sticking things down and different ways of just using the materials that you have around you. Um, I also thought, well, I can maybe look at kind of other art that might inspire, um, that might be inspired by my object. And I've got a couple of art books around. And I thought of um, this famous drawing by um, Albert, Albert Dürer. Let's see if I can, German was never my strong point. Um, and this is um, a drawing of a hair. And I thought, well, you know what? This is related to my hair. I could copy this drawing I could put this hair in a setting I could make a whole scene around this hair or I could just take the colours of this and create a completely new image out of it so there's ways of kind of different ways of playing with the object that you have where you can make so many different kinds of artwork and the possibilities are really limitless in the end the materials that you have to hand maybe paper maybe a pencil they all work. So part of it is actually having the object and having the memory. So what you might choose to do is actually illustrate the memory of the object. It could be the scene that you're illustrating. Yeah, so I think I've, I've talked quite a bit <laughs> about all my different objects. Um, I'd love to see um, in the coming weeks and uh, hopefully not months, um, the objects that you may have chosen to depict, things that you've made at home, and please send them through to the St Christopher's um, Facebook page. And um, post, if you sort of share them underneath posts to do with the art group, we'd really love to see them. And we'd love to do actually an online exhibition and hopefully at some point a physical exhibition of the artwork that's made during this time. And yeah, that comes to another point. Um, you might have noticed behind me this <laughs> slightly my my twig. Um, somebody asked me earlier today, is it um is it a kind of a it wasn't a shepherd's crook, but is it um is it some kind of thing that you use for walking? And I said no, actually, it was just <laughs> just a stick I found outside. So I think my neighbours think I'm a bit strange. But these are pressed flowers. So these are pressed flowers that have been laminated, and they're hung on fishing line, 
Uh, the original project for this was for Dying Matters Week, and it was going to be hung in Croydon Town Library, Croydon Town Hall, rather. And um, the theme was um, dying to be heard. So conversations about being listened to and about mortality and death and caring about people. And I think these are the conversations that we are we are still having at the moment and we're going to have even more of in the next in the next while but they're really important conversations and I think things that deserve to be heard so the group that I normally see on a Friday uh, we had discussed different ways of being heard and also the importance in terms of being heard you have to be listened to and we thought about all the things that are really hard to hear unless you're listening and what we talked about was the wind rustling through the trees we thought how could we capture that in a mobile and then we thought actually we could press flowers I won't move that too much room I come crashing down um, by, by pressing flowers and we were about to start making this when we all went into lockdown but we have some dried flowers that I've been carrying on pressing my geraniums have um have gone into my airing cupboard underneath a big heavy bowl and they're being pressed and some of you may have done flower pressing before and um, may actually have flower presses where you have the screws to turn the flowers down to turn the flowers down to to compress the flowers and if you put it in a warm space after a couple of weeks you have a dried flower and some of pe some of the members of my art groups have been drying their own flowers at home from from their gardens or maybe when they go on their their once a day walk or other members of their family have been doing it and we've got grasses, we have leaves, there are some flowers here. I've also, what I've been doing today is doing a bit more. So taking these dried flowers and laminating, arranging them so that it looked like they're falling and laminating them. And what we would really like to do is to invite people from St Christopher's community, patients, carers, family, friends, and the general public to collect flowers that they might find on their daily walk if 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 you're allowed if you're allowed to collect the flowers. So please don't collect any wild bluebells or wild violets. Um, we, <laughs> we might get in trouble for, um, for decimating wildflower populations. But if you're allowed to pick the flowers that you find, and you or if they're flowers from your own garden, please please send them in to um, the wellbeing team at St Christopher's Hospice. And um, if you draw or if they please feel free to laminate them or if you don't we're very happy to laminate them and your flowers or your leaves will be included in our large group art piece and yeah I think the I think it feels quite it wasn't originally devised as this but I think it feels quite relevant at the moment because all of us are some of us are on our own some of us are with our families but we're all in these self-contained little little bubbles or um, pouches with the only things we have coming in are the news or maybe actually now we can all hear the birds and we can hear the wind in the trees but um, we're not we're separate from each other but I felt that this was quite a nice way of seeing that although we're all separate we're all together as well and actually that collectively this could be a very big art piece and it could be very beautiful as well so I'm going to be talking about this more and be showing you my progress as um, the weeks go on, well, hopefully not too many weeks, but um, and this will be continued to work on, and contributions are very, very much invited. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of where I've got to for today. So um, I've just seen that another person has joined. Um, so just to quickly explain, as oh, I'm not sure, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I've reconnected now. I just got a warning sign on my screen. Um, but yeah, this is uh, press dried flowers and um, that have been laminated and to represent the sound of the wind in the trees, which is the sound that you hear when you really, really listen. And in line with this, we're also going to be inviting people to share their stories of the lockdown with St Christopher's. And we're really wanting to collate people's stories as well as asking people to send in pressed flowers to be part of this art piece. We would like people to send in their stories and we'd like to make it make a catalogue of how people are coping and I suppose the difficulties but also the, the positive experiences people have had in lockdown. And uh, I've also got other art projects that are large group pieces that are coming up that 
you're very, very welcome to contribute to. And um, we'd really like to hear your thoughts. I'll also each week think up an art activity that you can do during the live stream or after the live stream. And um, yeah, I'll be available for any questions or queries that you might have. But it's been, thank you for tuning in today um, for this first ever St Christopher's Art Online live stream. And I hope to see you all again in the future. So thank you very much and goodbye for now. See you next week. <laughs>